Okay, Boker Tov, everyone. Guten Erev Shabbos. We're going to learn our Nesiva Shalom. We're beginning the Ma'amar Shalishi, the third essay. Now he begins to focus in. He will get to eventually. What is the first Mita we really have to focus on? Where's the starting point of Mito's development? And he's... It might surprise a few people. I don't know if we're going to get to it today, but for sure next week. Start as following. Isabavos, we find in Pirkeyavos, Hakino, Vataiva, Vahakovo, jealousy, lust, and honor. Motsiana Saadamin Alam, remove a person from the world. What does that mean? That means it nor a normal human being lives within the context of the way the world goes. You know, you live with the law of gravity. You don't jump off buildings because you know there's rules to the world. If you don't do that, you're out of touch with reality. So person who is um, um, uh, falls into these three uh, behaviors is not living in reality. Jealousy, lust, and honor destroys you. These three midos is the source of all the bad midos in the world. You name a bad mito, it has to be sourced in either jealousy, lust, or on. Okay, why is that? To understand their unique implications, the morale in Der Chaim explains. A human being has three primary forces within himself. What is that? The natural physical force that he has, which is simply who receives sustenance and the body is built from it. Now, that's the natural physical human being. And what does that breed? A person who constantly has to ingest this world in order for his existence to be and for him to grow physically. So from that comes hatayvas haros, that comes bad taivas, bad lusts. Umashchanu, and where, where's the mishkan? Where is the place where it sits? Where's the root of that? Bekaved in the, in the liver. The liver is what uh, cleans the blood and everything that you eat somehow gets through the liver. And it affects the blood, and the blood is the life force. Okay, there's all kinds of mystical stuff behind that. But there's the natural, physical human being, and you must intake physicality to exist. Now, if you're not careful with that, that is where the lusts is going to come from. There can be a neutral lust, such as legitimate hunger. Legitimate hunger requires you, I must eat. If not, I will die. Problem is, once you're ingesting, you might lose uh, uh, lose control and then let the feeling of hunger and lust take you over. That's when you're going too far. So that's number one. Number two, then comes the animated part of the person. Not the part that makes him physically grow, but the animated. That's the real life and the movement of the person. Where a person has feelings and emotions. And from that comes revenge, bearing a grudge, jealousy, and hatred. And the repository for that is the heart. So it's basically your feelings. It has nothing to do with your physical welfare at all. Your emotional welfare. Okay. And, you know, that's what animates the person. Okay. The third aspect of human being, is the intellect. That's where the uh, sensitivity comes from and the thought comes from. And the repository is in the brain. And from that can come the one who seeks honor. 
Okay, so these are the three main parts. Every human being cannot deny those realities. There's a physical part to you, an emotional part to you, and an intellectual part to you. Housed in the liver, housed in the heart, housed in the brain. Now, Hashem gave all three of them boundaries and amounts how much do you need for all three of them to become a healthy individual? You're dealing with three aspects that have to all be taken care of in a right way. And Hashem, through his Torah, has given us guidance. How much food should you eat? What your feelings, what you should be feeling about, what you should be thinking about. But when you go beyond those boundaries, that's when it takes you out of the world. Those are the words of the maral. So now we'll have to explain what does the maral mean. This, this is so yesodiastic. Everything hinges on this because this defines who we are. Remember, the maral comes before the Baal Shem Tov, before the Balatanya. Okay, so they, they base a lot of their writings on the maral. Okay, now. Truthfully, these three aspects of the person are essentially the essence and the nature of the maintenance of the world. You couldn't have a world without these three feelings or emotions or these three things, such as you have to have taiva in this world. You have to. If you had no taiva, no desire, no lust, the world would not exist. A person wouldn't eat or drink. He died from hunger. He wouldn't give, wouldn't marry a woman. And have children. There is a certain part of the body that says, I need to take care of myself. I have, God created us with these needs. God created me with a lust to ingest food to take away my hunger. God created me with a lust to be attracted to people of the opposite sex, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a lust to, to build things, to build homes, to all these things. The Gemara said when they took away the Yetzirah, for for immorality, people stopped having kids. Chickens stopped laying eggs. Right. So therefore, but the Pusik says in Yeshaya, Lo Sovero, God did not create the world to be in a void. He created that it should be inhabited by people. So imagine a person who has zero drive. That's where drive, drive and lust, like similar words. Right. You you want to have a nice life. Well, if, if you don't want to have a nice life, you just sit in, in a dilapidated home that falls apart. You don't take care of yourself. So it, it's, it's necessary. God gave us this innate feeling that we must satisfy certain desires or the world would not physically exist. So it's good. It's good to have a certain degree of tava. But there's limits. The Torah limits us and says, how much can you have? Gamakina. Also jealousy. It, it pushes a person to be engaged in building and, and creating things. Without it, the world would also be desolate. For example, there'd be no intellectual jealousy, which we say, when another guy learns a lot of Torah, I want to be like him and learn a lot of Torah. If there wasn't, Asher tar b'chachma. It says kina sefer tar b'chachma. When I have an envy of other people's scholarship, it increases wisdom. I see this guy's learning Torah. I want to learn Torah. Okay, but there's areas where Hashem wants you to be envious, and areas where Hashem does not want you to be envious. Okay, vechenu in yina kavod. So is the idea of honor. Shemimano nimshach asher yesh adam regesh kavod asbi. That for, creates a person wants to have self-esteem. He wants people to recognize who he is, or at least he should recognize who he is. He has to feel he's something. 
Ubalos said without that halchi but they had room in kebab people will walk around unclothed like animals. I've no I've no self worth. Vosi masi mushchasim belibush people will do destructive things without any shame. These homeless people they just urinate right in front of stores. They have, they have no self esteem. And, and, and the liberals think, just throw them money. That'll give them self-esteem. Make it a socialist country. It'll give them self-esteem. It's not going to give them self-esteem. Okay, so what happens? So these three forces are positive, positive forces. If you don't have them, you would be dead. You'd live in a dilapidated world, and you would act like an animal. Okay, that's interesting. What separates us from an animal? An animal only has the first of the three forces. Tava. Physical drives. Why? Because in order to keep them going, they only need that. They don't have to have feelings. They don't have to have a brain. They just need one thing. A desire to continue to exist. That's all they need. When a person takes these three primal forces, shame you sowed Vikim Alam. It's the foundation and the maintenance of the world. But when he exaggerates and inflates them more than the boundaries that are established that are necessary to maintain the world, it causes destruction in the world. And that's what it means. It takes a person out of the world. That's the simple idea. Odie Sombraza could add to this. I'll be a so dear morale based on this morale. These forces, which are Hamoach, the force of the mind, Halev, the force of the heart, Akoved, and the liver. These are three fortresses. Esher Aleim Noshum Noshut Notush. These three areas are the main battlefields between good and evil and who will win in the world. There's a battle over your brains, over your heart, and over your liver. These, how, where these forces will fall into, will the physical force to exist as a physical being be to the good or to the evil? Will the emotional side be drawn to the good of the evil? Will the intellectual side? Kamisha Shalom anyone who can control these fortresses, who now he's in control of all the battles. You're in charge of those three areas. And of course, we know. Let's take a look. The first letter of Moach is Mem. First letter of Lev is Lamed. First letter of Kavit is Chaf. Spells Melech, a king. You have to rule in that order, in that order. We'll see. First the mind, then the heart, then the limb. Okay. But if you give control to these fortresses, to the forces of the opposite, you have lost any holy dominion completely from yourself. That's what it means. It takes a person out of his world. Yes? I understand that you can have control over your brain, control over your heart, or you can have control over the liver. It, what do you eat? Okay, that's the stomach. Yeah, it's how you eat. You have, could, but then you have, that is again the heart and the brain, right? No, but then, but then there's things you do without thinking. You don't have to think when you're eating. You binge eating. Yeah, sorry. You're thinking, sorry. you know, you're a little bit hungry. So you take a box of crackers. Three minutes later, the box is empty. The box is empty. Right? The more the more you put physical things into you, it just causes you to want more physicality. There's not a lot of brains to that. A cow, a horse. You ever mayor's farm just go to see horses all they do all day long is sit on the grass and graze. That's all they do. Unless an owner forces it to ride him. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, that, that, so there's people who could be like that. They just graze. I see you're an animal. Okay. Now, 
What was the order that they said in Pirkei Avos? Kina, Taiva, and Kavod. Okay. Why did the rabbis put Kina first? The Taiva of Kavod. Uh-huh. But based on the morale, you'd figure it should have been in the order of the forces. It should have started with Taiva, which is which is the physical aspect. Right? Tava, lust, is the physical point. So why did the rabbis reverse it? I'll be Seder. Rabbis arranged it based on how they develop in the human being's personality as it develops. Which one is the dominant one first, second, and third, as we see. A little baby, how much brains does he have? How much emotions does he have? How much animal is he? The first area of where the evil de- uh, minas can develop is jealousy. Even the child who's on the mother's breasts, it's well known he already has jealousy because he, he wants. What is the biggest problem you have with your kids when they're little? How come Shlaimi got more? You divide it even? Each to my grandchildren. They say he got, they say he got a bigger one. I want to pick first. It's all jealousy. It's all jealousy. Then develops the lusts. Based on your age. You get more sophisticated. You lust for more. Then later you want the honor. That's the order develops. Obviously, the Holy Torah gives us the ways of life. Because what do you see? After the sin of the forbidden fruit. And what happened as a result of that? A mixture of good and evil. It became very difficult to discern where good stopped, evil continued. So let's see, after they ate from the forbidden fruit, let's see the next three sins that the Torah talks about. Cain haragas hevelachiv. Cain killed his brother. Why? It was jealousy. Machmas midas hakina. Shigia, who was so jealous, until he killed his brother and destroyed the world. So that's number one. Then the Torah tells us the blemish of the generation of the flood. What was that rooted in? It was Tavis. Loss was the root. And what does the Basak say? What? The lust? What is the lust there in that situation? Homosexuality. Perversion. Perversion. They're perverts. Like, you know, it's just like in the United States. Is that normal for a man to think he's a woman? A woman to think he's a man? That is happening everywhere in the world. So the, all the evils come in all at the same time now. And people, people, uh, people don't love, people are jealous of everybody. Right? Then it talks about, well, I did that already. I'm sorry. Okay. Then came the end with the marble. Then came the test with honor. Dora Flogger, the generation of the Tower of Babel. Shama, they said, leave no seer umigdo. Let's bring up, build a city and a tower. And the head will go up to the heavens. Let's make for ourselves a name. Rediva Sakava, don't see him in all. That took a person out of the world as well. And obviously, those three things are the roots to the three cardinal sins. Okay, let's three cardinal sins. Okay, murder, which was murder. Cain murdered Hevel because of jealousy. It came from the heart, right? Okay. Next, we have immorality. 
immorality, generation of the flood came from the ta'ava, which came from the physical body. And finally came what? What's the third one? Idolatry, non-believing of God. The yeah, idolatry so means yeah. idolatry means there's forces other than God that run the world. Yeah, yeah. They well, built the Tower of Babel to 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 fight God, yeah. and that came from the mind. All these things it, it, it was the perversion of the covenant, giving honor to the wrong place. For me, is the honor, not for Hashem. So those are the three. It all fits into a nice little basket, and therefore. Obviously, God said we got to control this. So what does God give us? You know, you can make a nice little chart. You could chart it out. If I had time, I'd make a nice chart. <laughs> and now I parallel those three primary evil traits. Hakina type of covenant. Now it enters It enters the liver, the heart, and the brain. And that, and now it will take it over. So, now the Mishnah Perkeva says, the world stands on three things. What does it mean, stands on three things? Because we don't have these three things, so all people are going to go outside of the world. They're going to be crazy. That's the next layer in the chart. Okay, what, what do you need Torah for? Torah Torah primarily it deals with your brain information to think like a Jew right to know what to think like Avoda service right the primary service is prayer but it's the right the relationship serving Hashem that's the heart as we say in Titus, we said in the Shema, Ula of do the serve Hashem b'chol levavachem with all your heart. Ezo avodas you believe what's the service of the heart? Zut tefila, this prayer. If you if you pray properly, your heart will be in a good place, and therefore you will your emotions will be in the right place, right? And right, ukemilas chasodim and acts of loving kindness. That's a physical thing. You don't love other people just by, oh, I have a full shalem. Loving kindness means going to the store, buying things, schlepping, physically inconveniencing yourself for others. That's what chesed takes. Mainly you do it with your body parts. So that deals with the animalistic part. Through these three things, that's how the side of holiness can control the body, heart, and mind. And then Hashem rules over your physical body, your feelings, and your yearnings, and rules over your intellect and your viewpoint in life. Until it distance and cuts off the forces of darkness. From them come the jealousy, lust, and honor. That's life in a nutshell. So therefore, obviously, what's going to happen to a Jew who doesn't learn Torah? Okay, what's going to happen to a Jew who doesn't pray and serve God? And what's going to happen to a Jew who acts with a lot of acts of loving kindness? Right, that, that's, so, you, and you only got to lose one to be out of the world. You don't have to lose all three. If just time alone will take you out of the world. Jealousy alone will take you out of the world. And honor alone will take you out of the world. That's all. You'll be, yeah. as they say, mentally incompetent in any one of those three. So we live in a world where everybody is being, um, what do you call it? The, the media and the uh, uh, social uh, advertising, it's all feeding into your lusts. Yeah. How could you have more? How could you have more? How could you have more? 
it's also saying there's no such thing as God. Right? And boy, is there jealousy. Yeah. You, you, you've, been, you've been watching it this week. You've been watching it this week. Okay. Okay, so now we go to Peiches. Let's see if we can get a little more, maybe. One second. Let's just, yeah. So now, be night. Another five minutes. Now, the next point, it's a tricky point. And we got to get this whole paragraph in here. So I'm going to have to go quick because the beginning, it's not clear what he's getting at until we go a little further. So he's going to quote the Sefer Chodesh Pri Haaretz. He says, Since a person's Yetzir Hara gets stronger every day against a person, and if yesterday you were able to drop down the Yetzir Hara, let's say you fought the Yetzir and you beat the Yetzir Hara yesterday. And the spirit of Hashem rested on you to connect to Hashem in the meter that you were attacked in and you won. You had a good day yesterday. <laughs> Forget about it. Avil became misnach shlov yitzro lamacher by fenach of yosef kasha. Tamar yitzro tries a different method and even stronger. Here's the point he's saying: Every day you don't know what he's going to come up with. Okay, today he wants you to speak lashonar. Okay, I fought it. Tomorrow he wants you to frust like a dog and not be careful about kashrus. Okay, I fought that one. The next day someone slighted your honor. Oh, I had to be really fight hard to not take revenge. What's going on? Every day he comes up with a new shtick. So, you, you know, it's hard to always be on guard. So he says, Ella Im Kane, the only thing he could do, she's chazagat him kolka, presents the strength of him so much. Until a person has to work so hard to free himself from using that meat at all. In other words, in other words, he says, I have such a time, I have to fight this, this Yetzirah all day long about lust. I'm just not going to have any food anymore. That, that's the only way I can get out of it. And then, and then what, what, what he's really saying is, I don't want to use this meat in the wrong way. I just want to be able to serve my Kaddish Baruch. And as then the Yetzirah will leave you alone. In other words, you got to say, you got to say, I'm not interested in any of this stuff. I'm only interested in one thing, HaKadosh Baruch. And once that happens, then you're going to be free from anything else. It's not 100% clear what he's saying. He's going to explain in a minute. Okay, but the answer can leave you alone. That's called redemption. And that's what we're learning about in the Parshas. And that's like building your own base of Migdash. So what's the rule? Ha'amuna, faith. Ha'amuna, faith. It's an amuna that no eye can see, no ear can hear, no intellect can comprehend. A veniska of Hashem levado. Hashem alone stands above. Now you have to have real amuna, and then hiskaskos ayira. Then the fear of Hashem, and we said it's not fear, but understanding the reality. That comes after real amuna comes follows real yira. It's really one thing, but it's one simple thing. If you really understand what it means to be Hashem, then you're aware of that's the only reality that exists. That's what Yira really means. I see that Riyah of Hashem, and that's all that matters. Then it enables you to connect with all Yiddos. And then all the actions of iniquity will separate like something got melts before fire. Be emotional, the and you will be able to rule over your spirit like someone conquers a city. What's the point? Another five lines. What's the chiddush? How can you merit to achieve correction of midas until you're free? Remember, the midas they're fighting you. You don't feel free. How can you be freed from the battle? Like your mamish, it's a redemption. I'm not a slave to my times. I'm not a slave to my And it's a binyan based on the It's what? It starts with Amuna. And strengthening your ear shamaim. That comes right after Amuna. Amuna who la'elam called Dargin. The Amuna is higher than all levels. 
וכינה סימוסק שמיים שמתו, והיא תוכלס כל דרך צאת של המונה הטהרה והזקה, pure and holy אמונה, בכל המצבים הנפשים של אדם, in every situation of a person's life, היא תרופה ודוקה לכל המידס רס, that is the tried and tested medicine to all bad מידס. כן הקייס, you don't get angry, כן המסגי, you don't get jealous. The beginning of Mido's development is Emuna. And then you're a Shemayim. And he's going to demonstrate that next week. You, he clearly says how Emuna can deal with Kina Kava Taiva. How do you, if you don't have Emuna, forget about having Mido's. So you have a world that has no Emuna. So forget about Mido's. That's all there is to it. So before we're going to work on our anger, We're going to anger. What are, you, what are you wasting your time? Because then that's, it's a different job every day. But if the Amuna is strong, then all these things are not issues anymore. Okay. Shkaych, everybody. We'll see you all later at the Tish. Live or Zoomed. I think it's four o'clock, four or five. I have to check again. Whatever, whatever. We'll...